Hello Internet, it's me, Hugh with another Geeky Diary. Today I want to talk about really big numbers and really tiny numbers because they confuse me. I find it very hard to conceive of these very, very, very vast numbers like stars and tiny, tiny little numbers like this sort of cellular, molecular biology stuff that I've been looking at. Um, and if I was being completely truthful, I would say I was confused by all the numbers in between as well because math was never really a strong subject for me. I don't believe that one is born with or without the ability to do math. I think it's simply about how it's taught. And, um, and how you sort of apply yourself to it. I got behind in math and never caught up. And that was always the stumbling point for me. Uh, it's something that I sort of worry about very much with my son. My son has just started math now. He loves it, which is great. And I love that he's still at that age where he doesn't see the difference between learning and playing. It's all the same thing to him because learning should be playing. And I, I, I mean, he's absolutely got it right. Um, but basically I see this as a second chance. It's like my way to go back in time and to take math again from the very beginning and, and actually truly comprehend what's going on this time. I'm sure my son will get very bored of me leaning over his shoulder, but um, uh, basically that's what I'm, uh, what I'm hoping to do. I'm going to do this course with um, Jump Math, I'm hoping, in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, which is this fantastic guy, John Mighton, who uh, has started this program, which basically says what I've just said, that, that you, no one cannot do math. It's just a matter of how it's taught. It just needs to be broken down into smaller and smaller pieces in order for people to understand it. And the kids should love math because it's fun and it's useful and it's very important, obviously. Um, but going back to my very big numbers and my very little numbers, the point was, like, I had this number, a billion. And I just, like, I use the term a billion all the time. I see it in papers and newspapers and, and in articles. But I see the number a billion. And then I start looking at it, then I see that obviously scientific notation, which for those of you who don't know, very, very useful for, for adding and subtracting and multiplying and dealing mathematically with these large numbers. Um, for those of you who don't know, basically it's the process of taking uh, a number like a billion and turning it into 10 to the power of nines, which would be a one with nine zeros after it. Um, if you want to do one billionth, as in a fractional term, um, you would put a, a 10 to the negative nine, and that would be a, a point zero zero, you know, nine zeros, and then a, and then a one. So basically, scientific notation very, very useful for doing mathematics with very large numbers. Makes it much, much easier to um, to deal with. But the problem is, it doesn't give you a sense of the scale. So I went seeking out on the interweb looking for ways of, of comprehending a billion. I was surprised at how difficult it was to find useful examples of what a billion is. And let me tell you why, what I mean by useful. Like take a wheat seed, I have no idea what, how big or small a wheat seed is, but I'm imagining a seed, um, and imagine that, and I have to imagine that filling up all the rooms in the first floor of your house, again, depending on the size of your house, this one sucks, was a dump truck full of sand has one billion grains of sand in it. So basically you think of a grain of sand, and again, most people can conceive of that, that's how many of those would fill a dump truck. Now, obviously, the dump truck's gonna have different sizes, but you get the sense of the scale of that again, very useful. A thousand is the length of your thumb, let's say. If that's the case, then from the tip of your thumb to your elbow would be a million, and from your elbow to the equator, hopefully you're not living on the equator, um, is a billion. So basically, that is the huge differences between these numbers. I found a couple more. A billion hours ago, our ancestors were in the Stone Age. A billion days ago, this thing called the Australopithecus was roaming the African savanna, so 2.7 million years ago. Wow, have no idea what that means. One billion months ago, dinosaurs roamed the Earth, and one million years ago, the first multicellular organism appeared on Earth. There you go, give you sort of a sense of, of where those billions come in. Uh, this one is insane. I so hope that this one is true. With one billion dollars, you could buy three homes worth a million dollars each in every country in the world, and it goes on. You could then buy three homes in each state in the US, three in each province and territory of Canada, three in each country in England, three in each state and territory of Australia, and finally, with the leftover, with the change, you would have a car worth 75,000 US dollars parked in the garage of every single one of those homes. That's how much a billion dollars is. That, that blows my mind. So there you have it. That's my take on a billion. There's probably a billion other ways of describing a billion. If you've got a good one, comment below, let me know. And in the meantime, bing, subscribe. I'm trying that out now, this bing, subscribe thing. Um, so until we geek again, cheerio.